Hello there, this is your professor Mohsin Wahib again. In this first session of the flipped phonology class, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between phonetics and phonology. We're gonna see exactly today what does phonology tell us and why are you here enrolling in this phonology classroom. Okay, let us ask ourselves this question. How many languages do we have in the world? And how many sounds do we have also in the world? Which number is greater? The number of languages that we have in the world or the number of sounds that we have in the world? Actually, the number of sounds that we have comparing to the number of languages is just very small because some languages share the same sounds. We have thousands of languages but we have just few hundreds of sounds. Well, in fact, speakers of languages, when they communicate, they produce sounds, or let's call it utterance. What is an utterance? Utterance is a set of sequence of sounds. These sounds are all combined to give us a meaningful language. So language itself is composed of a sequence of sounds. There is a philosophical question now, which is, are these sounds discrete? or continuous. So why do languages sound so different? Or what makes languages so different? Actually, when we speak, we'll produce sounds. But before we call them sounds, what we produce actually is what we call utterance. What is an utterance? Utterance is a sequence of sounds that are produced by our organs, or what we call in phonetics, articulators. And what does utterance compose of? Utterance is composed of a set of sounds that we call segments. One of the basic assumptions of phonology is that the utterance or speech is composed of a set of discrete segments. These segments are separate, are split. Okay, let's take the example of the word cat. If you pronounce this word here, cat, and you pronounce it in English, how many sounds do you produce? Actually, the word cat here, and because you studied phonetics, your answer will be three sounds. The k, the vowel a, and the t sound. Three sounds. Our answer here was based on our preconceived knowledge on phonetics. So that's why we, we said that we are talking here about three sounds in the word cat. This will be contrary, as you can see in the, the, the picture here, the opposite of what the X-ray machines tell us. Spectrograms and X-ray films of speech show that when we produce actually the utterance, the utterance itself is composed of continuous sounds, as you can see. They are blended and merged into one another to give us speech. But if we zoom in very closely, we're gonna see that there is a very small space between each sound segment and another. And this is exactly the assumption of phonology. Phonology rests on the assumption that sounds or the production of speech is composed of discrete, separate, split segments of sounds. That utterances can be represented as a sequence of discrete units is one of the basic theoretical assumptions of phonology. This will lead us to another philosophical controversial issue, which is the discrepancy of sounds. This philosophical controversy will be very clear if we take the example. The listener actually, when he produces or articulates sounds, what he has in mind is the reality. But for a listener, what he, actually, what he or she actually does is this. Listening to the speaker and convey or perceive them as a meaning, but continuous sounds, not as segments of sounds. Once it becomes evident that it is advantageous to view segments as discrete or composed of sets of properties rather than as indivisible entities, we can show the relationships by listing explicitly the properties or features of each segment. If you look at this table here, we have four sounds, b, b, d, and n. These sounds here are different from each other. P and P are labels and they are stops. D and N are alveolars and both of them are voiced. 
The difference between these four is this. P is not like B because P is voiceless and P is voiced. D is not like N because D is a stop sound and N is an A is a nasal sound. N and B are different. Why? Because B is a labial sound and N is an alveolar sound. Again, D and P is, are different because P is a labial sound and D is an alveolar sound. So if they share certain features like P and P, both of them are stops and D and P and P, both of them or all of them are stops again, they are different in terms of voicing or in terms of place of articulation. This means that distinctive features can help us understand this discrepancy of sounds that which is the one of the basic assumptions of phonology. This is exactly what it means that all languages are different and what makes all languages different. So, in phonology, we are more interested in those differences between sounds in one language and other sounds in other language. We are more interested in differences or features that differentiate between one sound and another sound in the same language. This is what we call in English or in phonology linguistic significance. To study the differences between languages, what phonologists do is this. Phonologists are more interested in those phonetic differences which we call distinctive features. These distinctive features of sounds that characterize each sound from one language to another or from one sound to another in the same language can refer to what we call again in phonology the linguistic significance. So in phonology we are more interested in those linguistic significant sounds. These linguistic significant sounds are sounds that can make difference in meaning. To illustrate more, let's look at this example. Here in this example we have two lists of words. The first category, we have the same environment for each word except in one sound segment. Pin, bin, tin, din, kin, shin, sin and win. So this difference in only one sound segment makes difference in meaning. So pin is not exactly the same like bin in meaning. Tin does not have the same meaning like din and din is quite different from shin and kin in meaning. The second category here we have beat, bit, bite, bet, bat, boot, boat, bot. Again here in this list of words we have the same environment for each word except in one sound segment. This sound segment is a vowel. So the first beat is different from bit. Here, the first one we have E as a vowel, but the second one we have E, bit. This difference makes difference in meaning or difference in meaning. So, beat is not like bite, is not like bet in meaning. This shows that in phonology, segments whose function is to contrast forms have traditionally be, been called phonemes. What are phonemes? Phonemes are sounds that can change meaning from one word to another, even if they occur in the same environment. So, we say that phonetic differences which are phonemic are linguistically significant. If phonemes are sounds that contrast meaning in languages, let's look at this example. Here in this example, we have pin, spin, Nip, pin, spin, nip. So if you look at these three words here, we have the same sound p, but occurs in different environments. In the first, we have its in, in its initial position. The second example, we have 
occurs exactly after s and in the third one it occurs in word boundary the final position of a word so although these are all different occurrences of the same phoneme which is p its pronunciation reveal that it has different phonetic variants we shall call them allophones so we said that in phonology we are more concerned with what we call linguistic significant sounds and one of the linguistic significant sounds that phonologists are concerned with is a phoneme the second category is this allophones allophones are what are different articulations of the same phoneme like in the example so pin spin nip the same phoneme which is p is articulated differently in different environments in the first it was aspirated in the second it was unaspirated and in the third it was not released so a phoneme may have several allophones and these allophonic differences are also linguistically significant linguistic significance is about sounds that can change the meaning even if we keep the same environment except in only one sound segment that's exactly what we call a phoneme linguistic significance is also about those sounds that can be just an articulation or different articulations of the same sound that will not change the meaning and this sound is what we call or these different sounds are what we call allophones this distinction between phonemes and allophones allows us to recognize two levels of phonological representations first is the phonetic level which refers to the pronunciation of sounds second is the phonemic level which is about sounds that can make contrastive meaning sounds that can contrast meaning the phonetic level is about what we say those discrete sound segments that we produce the phonemic level is about what is abstract what we have in our mind the sounds that we want to use in order to contrast meaning and to produce meaning these sounds in our abstract mind can be different from what we say or what we produce in its phonetic level so ladies and gentlemen today we've seen phonology in comparison to phonetics if phonetics is about how sounds are produced transmitted or perceived Phonology is about how sounds function in relation to each other in a language. If phonetics is about the sounds of that language, phonology is about the sound systems of a language. So what does phonology tell us? Actually, phonology tells us four main points. First, it tells you what sounds are in your language and what sounds are not actually sounds in your language. Number two, it tells you what combinations of sounds are actual words in your language and what combinations of sounds are not actual words in your language number three phonology tries to tell you why certain phonetic features are really important or crucial to identify a word while other phonetic features are not really very important to identify a word and here we can mention in english the two phonetic features voicing and aspiration if voicing in a word like pat and bat can be very important to identify the meaning between the two words aspiration is not really important to identify the meaning if you say police aspirated with police non-aspirated it will be no difference in meaning last but not least phonology also tells you how to adjust your pronunciation of a morpheme to suit a certain phonological context and here we can mention an example in English the morph the plural morpheme se with the, the past morpheme te if the plural morpheme se is adjacent to a consonant which is voiceless se will be pronounced as se but if se is adjacent to a sound which is voiced se will be realized as z the same case will be also with the example of the past morpheme t. If t is adjacent to context where a sound is voiceless, then t will be realized or articulated as t. But if it is adjacent to a voiced consonant, 
but will be articulated as the. Thank you for being faithful to our flipped phonology courses. I hope you enjoyed this session and please stay tuned for more coming videos inshallah. Take care.